We have spent a lot of time talking about soprano saxophones, especially on the intermediate level. So today, I want to talk about this guy, the professional Labravo 200 from P. Marriott. Let's check it out. Howdy, everybody. My name is Andrew King. We are here at Alamo Music. Don't forget to visit our website at alamomusic.com, where we have these instruments and so many more available. Also, if you don't mind leaving a like, that definitely helps us out in the long run. Today, we're going to be talking about the P. Marriott Labravo 200, a great professional level saxophone that's going to service pretty much anyone who wants to get into it. Now, professional level instruments are kind of a hard ticket. It's not just because of the price tag. There's certain things about these kind of instruments that you kind of have to take in consideration, especially when you're moving in from like a student metal or a intermediate level. Airflow into a professional level instrument is always going to be an issue. And an instrument as touchy as a soprano, where it's so hard to kind of nail down a certain tone aspect, it can be kind of a tall bargain to just go ahead and get that soprano. So I recommend at least knowing what you kind of like to do on soprano before getting this kind of instrument. If you're a professional player and you're looking for like a straight up good soprano, I honestly can't recommend a better one. This is one of those sopranos that just do everything you ask. It's a heavy set, really well made soprano with a bunch of different awesome looks. This one in particular is just gorgeous. It, it just hits, it ticks every little box that I like personally, especially when it comes to aesthetics. Um, I've always been a huge proponent of single color kind of uh, lacquer finishes. So like if the parts and the lacquer on the horn body all kind of match together, this is the kind of thing I like. With the Labravo 200, this one has basically this beautiful matte finish on the body with gold, uh, gold plated keys, not gold plated, but gold keys. And so the kind of the look of the instrument is very striking, very nicely visual. And for some people, that's a huge deal. So I definitely recommend it. Um, the process P. Marriott goes through with these kind of vintages. They do like a three year layer thing. Uh, it just works beautifully. I really like it. The other cool thing about this one is that it comes with two necks. Now, a lot of these kind of Taiwanese boutique level saxophones are going to come with different options. Now, P. Marriott, in one, for this example, has two necks, and they're both silver plated. It's not really going to change your sound much, as much as like some marketing might tell you. But with this one in particular, it is pretty important because the two necks are going to be basically, you have your straight neck, like you would, it's basically how it would feel on a regular soprano, where it's that one piece straight up and down, your little golden clarinet thing going on. It's beautiful, it works great, and everyone's used to it. The other one is, I would say it's a really good case example of what you would do if you're moving straight from like being an alto or tenor player and then going into the soprano. And the reason I say that is because the other neck has kind of a curve to it, and that makes it a lot more easier to for people that are going into it and just straight into it from another uh, saxophone. Because we're already used to the mouthpiece being in the mouth going straight across, right? When you're, <laughs> I should actually point it straight at the camera, right? Uh, and when you're playing it from the straight uh, across, and so when you have that curve to it, it makes it just more comfortable, especially if you're using a neck strap, which I always recommend. Um, now, on the other hand, I'm more of a fan of the straight neck because I like to play mine having kind of all the way out, going straight into the saxophone like this and just bending as, as I would with the instrument. Um, so that's my personal preference and basically having the option between the two is always a good choice. The, the instrument's playability is fantastic. From, up to, from the bottom to the top, the instrument has great ergonomics from the, from the low C key being perfect for my fingers to the low B flat and the G sharp table in general just being easy to maneuver. In all honesty, the feeling of the E flat key to the C key, it's not as clicky as a lot of other instruments could be. Like, for me, I'm very used to my STS-411, which is an intermediate soprano from uh, Selmer USA. It's a Taiwanese made instrument. It's fantastic. Um, but the space of the key action is very wide. Uh, when, you, when you press on the E flat key, you go in from the up to the C key, there is a very big margin of error from shifting from the E flat to the C. With this soprano, it's very more in line with just being comfortable. Uh, you're not really pushing far down on the key to make it happen. It's just very, it's very light and very easy. The rollers feel like they have a lot more um, function because of this. And so it's just a very comfortable instrument to play. It's very easy to play, I guess is the way to say it. Um, also, just the key action in general is fantastic. Uh, this being a P. Marriott, they're very particular about the playability of their instruments, so just finger feel and whatnot out from there, 
very nice. And the high F key and the, the palm D, palm E flat, and the palm F key all feel fantastic in my hands. This is a wonderful soprano. Um, also, with that being said, I am a very big fan of, on the back, the thumb rest. Uh, it, it's at an angle instead of just being a straight. And for me, being the filthy no neck, no neck strap soprano player that I am sometimes, that's super helpful because it lets me hold my hand while playing the soprano at a certain angle and it's very comfortable in that aspect. That being said, I do recommend if you're going to be playing this kind of soprano to definitely use a neck strap. It is extremely, extremely heavy. I think that has to do with kind of the, the lacquering, the parts themselves. There's a lot going on with the soprano. And just looking at it, you can kind of tell it's uh, got, it's very busy as far as the key work and whatnot. So while that does make for a, an excellent playing instrument, it is a very heavy soprano. And so if you're used to playing sopranos without a neck strap, just you know going like full on Dave Liebman straight across into it, uh, I definitely recommend looking into that just so you can have some, it helps with the shoulders, it helps with the forearms and whatnot. Um, it makes it just a lot easier to play over a long period of time. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the sound. I'm going to let you guys have a listen to it real quick and I will see you in a little bit. What do you guys think? I really enjoyed playing this instrument. I, I think that a professional level soprano saxophone has something special to it because it has a lot of that headroom and the airflow that you can have. And that basically means that you, when you're switching from like a student level, uh, like one of those kind of more inexpensive kind of Chinese models, or you're going into like an intermediate, the tube size of it, the bore basically means that you can only get so much air in and have so many different characteristics. When you get to the professional level of Sopranos, like this one, like the Labravo 200, what basically is happening, you get a huge swath of colors that you can kind of have access from to kind of give characteristics to your tone. Um, I'm personally using a Sios mouthpiece, that's the smoky mouthpiece. That one gives me kind of a lot of colors that I would like to play with when I play soprano, kind of like that more free-blowing tone. 
But because of the professional nature of the instrument, I kind of have access to a lot more stuff. I get like, like pure sounding uh, LA tone, right? Like super brightness that I like. I also get access to uh, that more uh, resistant heavy tone from a Selmer. Like there's a lot of colors that I'm able to play with. Um, and this is that kind of soprano that lets you do that. I totally recommend it. It is heavy, it is a heavy soprano, but I think that also means that you get a lot more focus out of the tone, the body is a lot more constricted, so a lot of that comes out within the playing of it. So tell me what you guys think, I would love to hear it. I had a ton of fun playing the soprano, and check out some of our other videos. I definitely recommend it, see if you wanna see one against the other. Uh, we're definitely gonna be pitting this one against the uh, Antigua Winds Pro One a little bit, so I definitely look forward to that when I appreciate you guys watching so much. If you can leave a comment that always helps out in the long run for us. And I really hope you have a wonderful day.